Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Theme Development. In this video, we are going to talk about using the Zustand library. So what is Zustand? Well, Zustand is a fast and scalable state management solution built by developers of Zotai and React Spring. So you might ask me, okay, well, this is a state management tool, but what's the need of using a state management tool? Well, I would say to you that state management is necessary part of modern applications development. Like as the applications grow larger and there are different components that are tied to each other. And when you are passing data from one component to another, as the applications grows larger, it becomes difficult for you to manage that. Okay. So earlier states were managed by passing the data down to various application components. But as I mentioned that as the application size grows, it becomes difficult for you to manage that. So to solve this problem, different state management libraries were produced. I'm sure you know about the Redux library, which you can use to manage the state by using a central store. So when you create a central store, any component that needs the data can grab that data from the store. So if there's a change in one component, it goes in and updates the store. If there's a change in another component, it goes in and updates the store. And basis on that change, if any component want to behave differently or probably update itself, it can do that. So that's the advantage of using a store. So this actually resulted in clean code and better data handling and sharing between components. And Zustand is one of the state management libraries. Now, before we move further and talk about what are the benefits of Zustand? Let me show you the use of Zustand in action. What we're going to build with that. So I'm sure you know that one of the things that we usually build, let's say in a WordPress site or a WooCommerce site is the ability for the user to be able to filter out the results that they are seeing on a search page, right? Let's say we have categories um, on the left hand side and then inside of the categories we have different categories, adventure games, movies, you have child categories also uh, inside of that and there could be like uh, multiple children and grandchildren, so multiple descendants of each of the categories. Uh, similarly, you can have tags and you can have more filters like that. Okay. And if the user selects one of these, what I don't want to happen is that I don't want the page to get refreshed. I want to be able to just click on this and the results should be updated without having to update the page. Okay. Now you could do that with the Ajax or you can do that with the REST API calls and just use standard JavaScript to basically manipulate the DOM and update the results. But when you are looking at these, when there are like multiple filters that are available, managing this entire data becomes a little bit difficult. Now, imagine, let's say if I click on this one, so what are the things that are going to change? So currently you're seeing 97 post as results. So this element should change based on this selection. The results should change. The load mode element should change depending on if there are more results or not. There has to be an API call that needs to go, right? Uh, and the URL should also get updated. So there are multiple things that needs to happen by just clicking one particular input element. Now, if we were to do this with a native JavaScript uh, without using a store, we can do that. But compared to when you do use a store, something like a Redux, it becomes a lot easier because, uh, let me show you that. So if I am going to inspect element, so let's say we have a current state uh, in which we have filters, which is currently empty. So it doesn't contain any information. We have different key value pairs like result count. So current initially it's 97. You have page number. You have total number of pages that are available in the result. You have loading, which can be used to manage stuff. You have results posts. You have root URL. And then you have different functions that you can use to be able to do something. For example, if user goes ahead and clicks on one of these, you would want to do an add filter to be able to add that filter into the query params so that we can get the right result using the REST API. If the user clicks on this clear filter, we can have a function called clear all filters and job of which is to do XYZ, which means 
basically remove all these make all these unchecked update the results update the url and things like that similarly deleting filter like if you uncheck this then something should happen for example uh, this should get unchecked url should be updated results should be updated so different things should happen so you can have different functions for you to be able to do all of these actions okay so let's take a look and see how this state changes if i click on this one okay so if i click on this one so notice that current state changed so now if i open it uh, so what happened so you can see that there are two times the state changed first was the loading to true so you saw the loading for a, for a fraction of seconds and then the number of pages changed so now we have five pages currently even a page number the count of the result changed from 97 to 41 right the post results changed you are loading nine posts at a time so those changed right and then similarly the markup got changed so which is containing this markup right so basically by clicking one thing we're able to manipulate the state of this object so, so we have a state object and we're able to manipulate different elements of this state and depending on that any component like for example this is a component right here this category is a component you have inner components like each of these checkboxes a component let me cl quickly show you that so if you click on that you can see that it's a checkbox accordion child okay so this is a component we're using a web component which i will talk to you about in the next video and explain to you why we would be using that okay so you each of these is a component then if you take a look at over here you have the results component you have the result count component so basically let's take a simple example so anytime you update the filter state is going to change so the value got changed from what it was before which was 97 to 41 so my component which is this one is going to be listening to the change so anytime the change happens let's say in the result count it's going to update itself okay similarly here if you check it it's going to be listening if this property if if this value let's say category id equals six exist in the filters so if you take a look we have this filters category six so if this id exists if you take a look at that element so if this this is the value six so if this exists in the filters then it's going to check itself okay if it not if it's not then it's going to uncheck itself okay similarly the uh, url will be updated and its url is going to pick up that data from this url so earlier the url value if you take a look url value was this right so because the url value changed to this one it's going to update that all right so that way different components can behave differently based on a single source of truth which is your state which is your store okay so your store contains the state and anytime a particular element of the state changes uh, for example you know uh, let's say the number of results changes this element is only going to be looking for that particular element which is the count of results basically if the count of results changes it's going to update itself so it doesn't care about anything else in the state it only cares about that particular element right so as you can see that it becomes really easy for you to manage things and as your applications grows large then building these components can be really easy for example tomorrow you don't want uh, one particular element from here you can just remove that component and then everything all the logic goes away along with that right okay and then you also have load more as you can see you do, can do load more here and continue loading the results depending on how many results are actually available okay so now there are no results so nothing is being shown okay so you can do multiple checks you can see that it goes and updates the results it updates that in the url as well you can add tags and depending on that your result count will change and similarly your load more will also change all right so continuing further so the whole application that we're going to build the search filter application is going to be built with zustan so the example i showed you which we're going to build is actually built with zustan store and web components okay so now the question arises why not redux why why can't we use redux you know why zustan what's so special about it well zustan is known for its simplicity because using hooks to manage states without a boilerplate code so when you use redux of course um, i'm not against redux but uh, there are a lot of other things 
that comes with Redux, you probably might not need. And most people find Redux really complex uh, to work with. So if I want, let's say, three items from 10, I can just cherry pick that with just 10. So just 10 doesn't actually give you any boilerplate code. You can pick up whatever you want. If you want to use actions, you can use actions. If you don't want to use them, you can just use your functions. There are many other features that Zustin offers, but if you don't want them, you can just skip them. All right, just use it whatever you want. So that's the beauty of Zustin. And it's got like 24,000, 24 and a half thousand approximately uh, stars. So you can see that it's gaining traction in the community. And um, it's used by like 59.4 thousand people. They're like 134 contributors. So it's actively being developed. Okay. You can use it with TypeScript, you can use it with React, you can even use it without React. Okay, so the one we are going to build is going to be without React. Okay, so it's a German for state and it's unopinated, so less boiler code, use it with React or native JS. It renders components only on changes to the value of the state. So changes in the state can often be handled without having to re-render the component. State management is centralized and updated via defined actions. It's similar to Redux in this regard, but unlike Redux, where developers have to create reducers, actions, dispatch to handle states, just and just makes things far easier. And you will see that when we build it, how simple and easy it is to use. And it's very lightweight also. So it uses hooks to consume states. Hooks are popular in React, such as welcome state management method. And it provides clean code by eliminating the need to use context providers, thus resulting in shorter and more readable code. So if you take a look at the bundle phobia and if you search Zustend, you can see that it's only 2.8 KB and only 1.1 KB minified. Okay, so it's pretty lightweight. Brilliant. So I'm pretty excited about showing you how to use Zustend and how to use web components as well. So in the next video, we're going to talk about web components and the benefit that it offers and how can it benefit us in the application that we're going to build for search. And then we're going to start building the search application in the next next video. All right. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.